having a lovely little morning coffee moment. I'm finally coming out of my winter hibernation and absolutely loving the fact that I can sit and have a coffee outside and it's not freezing. Although it is quite windy, so sorry if you, <laughs> if you can't fully hear me. But yeah, make a cup of tea and come along with me as I show you what the first few months of the year looked like for me. I feel like that transition between winter to spring can actually be quite a special time when you slow down enough to notice all the little signs of spring. Over the last couple of years, I've tried to lean more into winter and all of its coziness. And last winter was a good one. But as soon as the snow went away and we stopped having frosty mornings, I was feeling very ready for spring. As soon as the first snowdrops come out, I start dreaming of longer and warmer days. At the start of the year, I made a new batch of pottery and if you don't already know, I make and sell pottery and I release it in seasonal small batches throughout the year. It felt really good to be back at the wheel, creating brand new things to release in spring. Because I spend so much time sat at my wheel throwing pots, I try and take lots of breaks to go outside and go for a walk and enjoy nature. It's putting my cup of tea down because I think I've just found some potentially edible mushrooms. I think these are jelly ears. I think they might be edible, question mark. <laughs> Don't want to die. I was very excited to find these mushrooms, even though I am well aware that they don't initially look appetizing and they do look like strange ears. But I think when you read about wild mushrooms and you eventually spot something, it's a very exciting moment. Obvious reminder to do your research and not just pick random mushrooms. Okay, so our ramens are done and I'm very excited to try the wooden mushroom. Ramen looks good. These were actually really nice. The mushrooms soaked up the flavour of the ramen broth in a really nice way. Mushrooms are not the only thing that I forage for at this time of year. With the ground being frost free, it's also a really great time to find some clay. I've collected a few different bodies of wild clay and these are my favourite. I am always in awe of the beautiful, rich earth tones and just how different they are when they're fired too. I also make pinch pots as well as wheel thrown pottery and this is really fun and a nice break from the wheel too. And of course, with it being spring, there is an explosion of wild garlic in the woods. I think slow living is a bit of a buzzword, but for me, a lot of slow living is about intentionally slowing down enough to appreciate life. It starts with a perspective shift and paying attention to the seasons really helps me do that. So I decided to make some wild garlic and cheese scones or scones. Let me know in the comments which way you prefer to pronounce that. But I had a lot of fun making these scones and it was also one of my first times using this butter dish that I made. I 
I definitely recommend these. They were so quick and easy to make and very yummy too. Mm. Oh my gosh. Yes. Welcome back to the workshop. I um, got some mugs back from, I don't know why I'm crouching. I got some mugs back from the kiln the other night and I am really excited to show you what's gonna be in the next shop update. Although by the time this video goes live, the shop update probably will have already happened. But I generally tend to sort of make the same designs. I sometimes experiment, throw a few new things in there. Even though I've been doing this for a little while now, going, like getting mugs back from the kiln is always a weirdly nerve-wracking experience for me. I don't know why, because I generally know what to expect, but I feel like there's always that slightly unpredictable element to it, especially with all the wild clay slips and things that I use. Um, I'm always half expecting something catastrophic to have happened and a kiln shelf to have been destroyed or something like that. But they've all come out looking really beautiful and I'm very excited to get them out stack the shelves um i've got some sanding to do i like to sand the bottoms to make them nice and smooth and make it a nicer nicer drinking experience so yeah, i've got to do that i've also got to do some product photography as well and get the listings up on the website schedule them get them ready to go so yeah the list the list is endless there's lots of things i need to do got to make some social media content as well obviously let people know that there's new mugs coming um, email the mailing list and I give mailing list subscribers an early bird code as well which lets them shop a bit early. Every time I've done a shop update so far the mugs do tend to sell out within like a day or two. They sell super fast which is amazing and mind-blowing. Um, so yeah I'd recommend signing up to that if you're really keen on getting something. But yeah I'm rambling now so I need to stop um, talking and start working on my to-do list because there's lots to do to prepare for this shop update. So I've just been sat on the floor for a while. Um, I'm watching back a reel that I've just been filming. And it looks pretty good. I was really happy with the way everything turned out. All of the wild clay slips were just really beautiful and rich and added a lovely texture to each of the mugs. So these mugs all sold out pretty quickly and after that began my least favourite part of the process, which is packaging. This is always the craziest time in my workshop. As the season shifts, we've been really trying to slow down and welcome and celebrate spring. We've been loving getting back into the garden, planting veg and flowers. We've sown potatoes, onions, lettuce, pumpkins, and a bunch of herbs too, as well as a bunch of flowers. Very ambitious considering our really, really bad potato harvest last year, but hoping for a better harvest this year. I'm really not the most patient person naturally, so all of these little practices have been helping me to slow down and accept that good things take time. It is time to give this bed a spring refresh. Big thank you to Piglet in Bed for sending me this beautiful linen bundle from their brand new collection. Even as I was making the bed, I could just tell they were going to be amazing. They are so soft. If you want to check out Piglet and Bed's new collection of beautiful, dreamy linen bedding, then I have a link down below. Every time I walk past the bedroom now, I just want to jump into bed because it's just so cosy and inviting. There's something about spring that really feels like the start of a new year. With like the days getting longer and a little bit brighter and all the trees that looked really dead in winter kind of getting all the new buds. It's all just getting me a lot more energised. I feel, I can just feel like a total shift in my mindset to how I felt in winter. Yeah, I just feel a lot more excited to try new things. It now feels like more of the time for the New Year's goals to 
to kind of manifest themselves. And one of the new things that I'm trying is knitting. Dan actually got me a knitting course for my birthday, an online knitting course. But when I went to go try and start the knitting course, I realised that he'd accidentally got me a course in Spanish. And the only other translation was in Turkish. And sadly, I don't speak either of those languages. <laughs> so I've been learning to knit really slowly and maybe, oh, I'm doing it wrong. And maybe I'll learn Spanish too. <laughs> but thankfully my mum's really good at knitting and she's also shown me a few bits. So I'm currently attempting to knit my first hat. Um, this is how, this is how it's coming along so far. It's a chunky rib knit stitch and it's a really lovely wool that mum gave me. So yeah, very excited to join the knitting community. If you knit, please leave some comments below telling me a bit about your knitting journey. And also I would really love if you could leave a comment and let me know about some beginner friendly knitting patterns that you really like too. Um, yeah, if there's any knitters out there, leave me a comment, reach out. Because I'm a ceramicist and my job is really creative, it's actually really quite nice to have a, another hobby that's creative but it isn't my job if that makes sense and I've also found that it stopped me from scrolling on my phone um I think I'm quite a fidgety person so it's been really satisfying just like being able to grab this and have something to do with my hands that doesn't involve doom scrolling on my phone so yeah I would really encourage you this springtime to try something new try something creative and explore the joy of getting to make something with your own hands it's very therapeutic and it might even stop you scrolling on your phone too. I kept knitting and I feel like I got into a bit of a flow state with it. It fits, it fits so well. I mean, it's not finished, obviously. Well, yeah. <laughs>